recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm so glad we're having this discussion, and I agree with um, Senator Warner. This is an area where crypto is being used to finance terrorism, and we have to provide the tools necessary to stop that. In fact, earlier this year, I worked with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to add an amendment to the NDAA uh, that would require examination standards for crypto asset intermediaries and request a report from FinCEN on mixers and tumblers, the way that information is scrambled to uh, prevent uh, detection. Furthermore, um, let's get after Binance and Tether. These are offshore companies uh, that are financing illicit uh, activities and terrorism. Um, we've got to prevent Hamas, Hezbollah, and other terrorist organizations from using digital assets, using cryptocurrency as a means to finance their activities. Uh, so mixed in with the talk of stronger sanctions on Iran and other avenues to prevent the flow of illicit finance, we've heard a lot about crypto assets today. We should be hearing a lot about crypto assets today. I think it's because our panel is in part missing the perspective of FinCEN and the law enforcement agencies that are actively fighting the finance of terrorism. When we ask FinCEN and others what authorities they need to combat illicit finance and crypto assets, they say they don't need more laws, they need more resources. I've heard from law enforcement that in many ways crypto assets are more traceable than cash. In fact, we've had people testify under oath in this committee that crypto assets are easier to trace than cash because the data is permanently available for everyone to see on a distributed ledger. If you want to download on a computer the entire distributed ledger of Bitcoin, you can do it in your office. It'll take you plug in a computer, sign on, take you about 100 hours, you can download the entire distributed ledger of uh, Bitcoin from day one in 2009 currently, and it'll update every 10 minutes. It, it's, it's remarkable, the information that's available there. So what we need to do is give FinCEN and our regulators the resources to carry out the mission. Now, we address this in the Responsible Financial Innovation Act that uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York and I uh, have sponsored. It's a comprehensive framework for digital asset regulation. It provides these resources. As a starting point, it gives FinCEN $150 million to carry out its mission in regard to crypto assets and provides the flexibility to hire and retain highly qualified individuals. Now, let's turn for a minute to intermediaries like Binance and Tether. We know that Hamas and other terrorist groups have, on literally hundreds of occasions, been able to open accounts with Binance even after public reporting about the issue. Binance is knowingly facilitating violations of sanction laws and the Bank Secrecy Act by failing to carry out adequate customer screening when it is aware the exchange is being used to finance terrorism. It is also well known that Tether is a favored on and off ramp for illicit activities to interact with crypto asset markets and is knowingly facilitating violations of the law. It was recently reported that Israeli law enforcement directed Tether to freeze 32 addresses controlled by Hamas and Russian-linked entities in Israel and Ukraine. Tether is failing to conduct adequate consumer and customer due diligence and screening, despite being aware that its product is used to facilitate terrorism and other illicit activities. That's why today I sent a letter with um, Representative French Hill, who's the chairman of the House Digital Assets Subcommittee, to Attorney General Merrick Garland asking the Department of Justice to wrap up its investigation and consider criminal charges against Binance and Tether for their involvement in illicit finance. And we now know, as Senator Haggerty noted, um, that the role of crypto assets in funding Hamas has been overstated, 
but even one dollar going to support the recent heinous attacks is too much. Binance and Tether have knowingly been allowing terrorists to move funds using their unregulated exchanges. Um, they're based in the Seychelles, in uh, the Caymans, uh, in the British Virgin Islands. It's time they're brought to justice. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that my letter to Attorney General Garland be entered into the record. That objection so ordered. We've tried the status quo where crypto asset intermediaries operate in an environment without clear paths to registration. As policymakers, we need to be making it more difficult to operate a crypto asset intermediary in the shadows offshore. But we also need to make it possible to operate a compliant exchange in the United States. By providing robust regulation, the United States can force bad actors out of the crypto asset space and ensure financial innovation can continue in our nation in a manner that does not allow illicit finance to occur. Um, I've used up my time and more so, uh, so I don't have any questions for you. But, Mr. Chairman, thank you kindly uh, for holding this hearing. I, I yield back. Thank you, Senator.